Welcome everyone to session one of your AI Agent MBA. My name is Jacob. I'm the founder and CEO of Relay.app. I'll be your instructor for this course. We're obviously not an accredited educational institution. This is not an official MBA. <laughs> uh, MBA is just shorthand for in the next 12 sessions of roughly 30 minutes each, I'm going to try to teach you everything you need to know to figure out where the world of business is moving in light of the new capabilities of AI agents and how to build the skills for yourself and members of your team to deploy AI agents effectively. And for this first session, we're going to start pretty high level and I'm going to share my perspective on where the world of work is going. In some areas, it's moving more quickly than in others, but I think these general patterns will hold. I feel pretty confident about that. So with that, let me dive right into a slide deck. This may or may not be a controversial opinion, but I think even if AI models do not improve at all from today, most companies, especially companies with heavy knowledge work presences, are going to change dramatically. They're going to be very different size and shape there in the future. And the way I know this is because I'm already living it. Uh, we're a 10-person team at Related App. For the amount of marketing materials we produce, customers we support, and general traction of our business, if we had been running a 2021 style company just four years ago, we would probably have at least 20 people and probably more. And as a specific example, I'm the founder and CEO, but I'm also the marketing team, the support team, the customer success team, the sales team, the HR team, the operations team, the finance team, et cetera. And this is only possible because I've created teams of AI agents that work for me in all these functions. So in marketing in particular, that's the area where I've invested most in AI agents. I made this LinkedIn post, uh, I think about four months ago now, where I said my marketing team is just me and 40 AI agents. And that post got the most comments on any post in LinkedIn history, 32,000 comments. And I promise it's, it's all real. And in fact, now it's more like 60 AI agents rather than 40 AI agents. So because I've started this company in the AI era and because we're building an AI tool ourselves, I think we can operate in a way that other companies will be able to achieve in the course of three or five years because they have more complex businesses or they have legacy systems they need to account for, et cetera. But yeah, the reason I'm confident this is the way the world of work is going to go is because I'm doing it and it's awesome. <laughs> um, so here's the TLDR. This is like, if there's one takeaway from this whole presentation is that I think the future is going to be small teams of super IC generalists managing dozens of AI agents each. That's what a typical company is going to look like. And let me walk you through step-by-step step how I think we're going to get there. Step zero, AI is already really, really good. It can't do everything. I've run into many use cases where the models aren't good enough, where I haven't been able to figure out how to get them to interact with my tools appropriately. But even if the models don't improve at all, my claim is that the quality of models today, whether it's Claude 4 Sonnet or uh, OpenAI's O3 or GPT-5, AI models are already good enough to totally reshape work. We just haven't, we've only scratched the surface of how to deploy them and take advantage of them. AI can already write, research, analyze, synthesize, and summarize better than the vast majority of people. And it can do these tasks dramatically faster, like a synthesis report on weeks of customer interviews would take seconds rather than days. Eight and much, much cheaper, cents rather than hundreds of dollars. This is if AI models don't improve at all. AI models are already very good at these like fundamental knowledge work capabilities. So step one in my prediction is that junior specialized execution roles will cease to exist. So look at the following five roles that are very common at many companies where the, it typically a junior person with a very specialized execution mandate who is given very little discretion or autonomy of what their work should be. And for example, they are asked to turn the outline and content of a blog post into a full 2000 word article, or read a customer support email and select a macro or canned response from a set of templates, or look at a spreadsheet and write the same report every week that summarizes the same four numbers, or visit these six websites every month and write a summary of them, or review these contracts that come in every day and look for a known set of terms to flag. AI is already better at all of these jobs and you should be using it right away. I'm not saying that AI is better at replacing the spark of insight of what makes a blog post good. I'm not saying that AI is better at creating a meaningful interaction and relationship with a the customer. There are many, many things AI can't do, but these super formulaic tasks where a text input comes in 
and a text input goes out and it's very rote and repetitive, AI is already better at these things. And we're already seeing companies that have big swaths of their workforce doing things like that, changing the way they work. So I think this whole class of junior execution, text in, text out role, that class of role will cease to exist. Second is step two, generalist super ICs will become the norm. So in a world where you don't need these junior execution specialists, you may have one more senior person managing a set of AI agents that can take on the specialized task. So for example, instead of having one person who just writes tweets and another person who just writes LinkedIn posts and another person who just writes blog posts and another person who just writes YouTube descriptions, you would have a super IC that's responsible for your social media marketing. And then they have specialized agents that do each of those. So I think these super ICs will span traditional boundaries. They'll do marketing, sales, customer success, and support all in one, much like early stage startups have one person doing all of those roles. They'll take out a wide range of tasks across those different functions. They will then have teams of specialized agents that have been expertly trained to do those particular tasks, whether it's writing LinkedIn posts or writing blog posts or reaching to competitors or whatever it might be. And so the super IC, the reason I say they're still an IC is they'll still need to be able to do work themselves. They'll still need to know what good looks like. They'll still need to have deep, high quality core insights. And then they'll use those deep, high quality core insights and their taste to train, teach, and manage their AI agents and provide the core insights and creative direction. And so I think this step two will kind of go hand in hand with step one, where it'll be these super IC generalists. You want to be one of these people who will figure out how to harness AI and have dramatically more leverage than an IC was ever able to have two, three, or, or five, five years ago. Step three, small teams of super ICs will move faster than big teams. Um, for a long time, and I remember, you know, at Google, the largest teams I ever worked on were a thousand people working on a single project. And we always said to ourselves, doing big things requires lots of people. And so we have to deal with all of the politics and the bureaucracy and the organizational friction that comes from getting a thousand people moving in the same direction. Because for a long time, big teams have been required for ambitious projects because ambitious projects have required a lot of work and a lot of work meant a lot of people. But I think that's changing, not for all classes of projects, but for certain classes of projects, things are slow, not because there's a lot of work because AI is an amazing accelerant at doing the work. Things are slow because it's too hard to get people to agree. And I'll give you a concrete example of this. I had someone reach out to me after a previous LinkedIn post that, hey, I'd be really interested in running a session for my leadership team. And it took us four months to schedule the session because there were so many different schedules that had to align and people's agendas that had to uh, be, 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 be managed. Whereas a much leaner team could have scheduled that workshop the next day. Um, so I think we're going to increasingly see the barrier to getting ambitious work done is not how much work it is, but how hard it is to get people to agree on what the work should be. And so I think small teams are going to make decisions way faster and produce much better work. So small teams of super ICs will move faster and they'll outperform bigger, more bloated, more bureaucratic teams. Step four, the bureaucratic roles that exist to manage these larger teams will then cease to exist. Because if you don't have these giant thousand person um, um, layers with a ton of different super specialized junior execution roles that all need to get aligned, you won't need as many pure people managers to play politics and shuffle around scope. You won't need many other types of organizational bureaucracy that exist to enforce consistency across people, whether it's in your performance review process or your um, writing guidelines or whatever it might be. So we're gonna see a huge shrinkage in um, purely bureaucratic roles. So the way I'm seeing it is in every organization, there's very junior specialized execution folks. There's a mid-level of senior super ICs who are mentoring the junior folks, but are also capable of doing real work themselves. And then there's the peer bureauc bureaucrats above them. I think layers one and three are gonna really cease to exist over time. And everyone's gonna be in bucket two, uh, a super IC. So then step five, we will all work at companies of the future. Dramatically smaller teams with high agency and trust, a wide range of ownership across tasks and functions, fast decisions and work that makes us proud. And I'm, I'm really trying to close this on a message of optimism because I am not uh, advocating for laying off lots of people. I'm not gleefully dancing on the graves of people who are losing their jobs, far from it. 
I think it's going to be really painful when a lot of these big organizations are going to have to slim down. But I think the result is we're going to have many fewer massive mega corporations and many, many, many more small teams. And all the studies I've ever read show that people are way happier working on small, autonomous, mission-aligned teams where you know your coworkers really well, you have a high degree of trust and agency. The only reason those small teams haven't been able to exist to the extent we would have liked them to exist is small teams have traditionally not has had as much leverage or ability to produce output, but that will change. And so, again, I'm not, I'm not like saying I'm so happy that a lot of people are going to lose their jobs, far from it. What I'm happy about is that the future of work, most of us will work at much smaller companies and that'll make us much happier. There'll be more smaller companies. Um, and so that's, that's step five of, of, of where we're going to go. So what should you be thinking about? Like, at first you can disagree with me on any, on any of these, these points. I could be wrong about the sequencing. I could be, I'm kind of overstating the consequences deliberately to make this a, a bit of a, a shock and awe presentation. Um, but if any element of what I'm saying in here is going to be true in the future, what should you do to prepare and how are we going to get there over time? So number one, the first thing you need to do is to understand the, the state of AI today. What is it good at? What do we expect it to become better at in the coming years? What foundations do you need to have to take advantage of it? Whether it's learning how to write prompts or learning how to construct a knowledge base or learning how to pass in the data and context that an AI model will need to do a job effectively. Similarly, to learn what AI is good at today, you just have to try a bunch of tools and see where the limits are. So for example, I've had a long standing goal. I spent a lot of my time uh, producing uh, pretty simple marketing assets like webinar posters and YouTube thumbnails. And I've really wanted to be able to do this with AI for a really long time. And I found that all of the image models, while they were great at creating cinematic imagery, were not particularly good at creating like functional imagery where there's a blend of text and images. And um, it's, it's less about the, the cinematic awe and more about functional communication. Google's recent nano banana model that came out like 10 days ago is the closest I've seen. I've been able to de get like decent text and image mashups, but it's still not quite good enough. And so that's an example where I would say AI is not good enough today, but I expect in the next year, someone will crack a model that can um, totally automate the process of creating simple marketing posters or, or YouTube thumbnails. Whereas AI today is already very, very good at extracting information from invoices and categorizing them into, into a spreadsheet. So build your understanding. And the only way to build your understanding is to experiment. Try a bunch of stuff within ChatGPT, try a bunch of different tools, see what works and, and see what doesn't. Then step two is to kind of build out your personal AI toolbox. And we'll talk in a later session in this mini course about the three different modalities of AI that we should all be using. We should all be using chatbots, we should all be using copilots, and we should all be using a workflow or an agent building uh, tool. And so I think you'll want to become an expert at number one, using chatbots. Whether you pick ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini or Grok, you can pick your favorite chatbot for whatever you want, but really understand how to use that tool. Play with custom GPTs, play with Claude projects, try using it for a wide variety of use cases, not just simple research or, or content creation. Try more ambitious synthesis, analysis, extraction, summarization, et cetera. Get really good at chatbots. Number two, pick a go-to workflow or agent tool. Obviously, I'm biased. I think Related App is awesome, but this is not an ad for Related App by any means. Zapier is an excellent tool that integrates with many, many, many SaaS applications. N8N is an excellent tool if you're a more technical person and you're comfortable with things like JSON objects and custom code, but really invest in, a, in building up your skills in a workflow agent tool because that, that will give you even more leverage than a chatbot. We'll talk about this again in a, later, in a later session, but AI agents do work automatically on your behalf. And that sort of by definition can give you more leverage than an AI agent that you, uh, than AI system that you have to interact with live every time. And then number three, this is really gonna depend on your role or your industry but every role, job, function, industry will have amazing co-pilot tools. So if you're a software engineer, you're probably already using something like Cursor. If you're a prototyper or an internal business app developer, you're probably already using something like Lovable. If you have a big part of your job, which is making slide decks for clients, you're probably already using a co-pilot like Gamma, where the AI chat assistant is on, on the left side of the screen and the main, the main window is, is on the right. 
you'll want to build up the AI toolbox for yourself and for your company. You'll want to make sure every single person in your company is an expert at a chatbot, is an expert at a workflow and agent building tool, and is an expert in whatever role or function or use case specific co-pilots are most relevant to their work. And then step you start building. And, and I think start building has sort of three components to it. Number one is you need to change the instinct for yourself and in your organization from I need headcount to I'll be creative with AI. And this is a bit of a meme right now. Everyone's seen the Toby memo from Shopify and the Louis Fennon memo from Duolingo. That's like, we must be AI first in all things that we do. But I, I actually think this is, this is the right way to think about it. Like every team I've ever been on has always wanted more headcount. I've, I've never seen a team in any size company that has not wanted more headcount. And I think we need to change that default mentality from headcount will enable me to do more to headcount will probably create more bureaucratic overhead when instead I should be using AI to find ways to do leverage to get more work done. Then number two, another big mistake I see when people are getting building is they'll try to jump right from very basic prompting in ChatGPT to trying to build a hundred node AI agent in N8N. That is too big of a technical and capability leap for someone to cross successfully. You want to get quick wins on easier tasks and then start building up incrementally over time from simple one-off prompts in ChatGPT to custom GPTs to using your one-off prompts in automated running workflows to making those workflows com more complex across multiple prompts to eventually scaling up to more complex agents. That's step three. Incrementally build up more complex techniques, techniques and agents over time. And that's what this 12 uh, session structure is going to be about. We're going to start with really simple use cases and really simple examples. And then by session 11, 12, we'll have much more advanced use case with knowledge and memory and multiple agents working together. But my hope is that each step individually will feel natural and obvious because we'll take a progression <laughs> that, that makes sense from, from beginner to, to advanced. So how, here's what you're going to learn in this class, uh, for which this is session one. First, you're going to learn what AI is good at today. And I bet there's three or four things AI is good at today that you're not yet using. Number two, you're going to learn the different modalities of AI, whether it's chatbots or copilots or agents and when you should use them. Number three, you're going to learn the most common types of AI agents and patterns, starting with the simplest that are most beginner friendly and then advancing into more complex use cases. And then you're going to build up one by one the techniques and skills you need for building your own AI agents, triggers, automations, prompting, knowledge bases, et cetera. I think it's going to be a ton of fun. I hope everyone will find it really valuable. So with that, thanks everyone for joining. If you have any feedback on the session, feel free to send me a personal note afterwards. Otherwise, uh, I'll see you next time.